I'm just checking for square between this and the center one. So I have an equal distance between them, and now I've got them square, which means that um, if it was at a square, one of these would be like pushed back or pushed forward, and then if I continue doing that to the other far side, I'd end up with a cabin that's more of a parallel parallelogram instead of a rectangle or a square. Um, I don't want that to happen because I'd throw everything off. Then when I get up to the roof, um, the framing's going to be off. But I'll, I would recognize that when I'm framing the floor. I have a little bit of leeway on how I lay out the floor. I could always like hang it over the the beam a little bit, the, the studs for floorboards, the floor uh, framing, um, or I could leave it inside a little bit. But better if I can just get it perfectly square at this level and start working my way up. I have to drop that timber down a little bit, probably half an inch on the outside pillar in order to get that uh, that timber level. So I'll do that now and then I can start doing the floor for this section. The reason I want to do that is I want to maintain that square and the uh, best way to do that for, for me would be to get these uh, floor joists in place and have those hold these timbers square while I start fastening up through the bottom into these timbers to through the top plate of the of the basement wall and uh, that way I can make sure everything's secure and then it, it won't move then I can just put a ton of fasteners and screws and nails just to keep everything from shifting the more fasteners I can get in the more different directions of wood the more stable this whole foundation footing of the cabin is going to be so that the logs don't uh, cause their logs are going to be really heavy I don't want them pushing everything at a level and the other thing is the more this is all tied together the more it will settle equally my fear is that with a full basement here and full walls and then just timbers on essentially these six um, corners the four corners and the center timbers the risk is that those settle at a different rate than here so I want to span as much as possible with full length timbers which I couldn't do here um, this would take me too long to well I could have done it I guess but it would have been hard to handle 24 foot long you know, six by eight so but from here up I'm gonna have full length wall uh, full length logs in the walls in you know multiple levels at floor level and then again above the door heights so that'll hold it all uh, pretty level and hopefully settle at the same with same rate
everybody welcome back to the homestead I guess I'm gonna call it Let's grab this red pepper so as you can see the garden's been pretty productive both outside and inside in the greenhouse uh, it's been a good year though <laughs> when you consider that this was really dense for us earlier this spring and then I had to clear this area then uh, with help build the greenhouse and uh, and slowly get everything planted. I'm fortunate that I was able to get anything, especially because the conditions here are so raw and so challenging for growing food. The reason for that is that it's um, really sandy and really acidic. So I'm gonna have to keep uh, trying to improve this soil as much as possible and try to get as much organic material on it in order to hold the moisture and then also mulch to protect that moisture from evaporating. Um, the, I think one of my uh, saving graces here is that the water table is not that far below the surface here. I got the greenhouse, it's what, three and a half feet down or something like that when I hit water and it's sandy so the water percolates in. So a lot of these trees, for example, and then some of the deeper rooted um, plants are tapping into that moisture below ground. Um, the challenge though would be insurmountable if it wasn't for the weather we got this year. We had dry, really dry weather in, um, I think May and June were fairly dry, I think especially early June. But then when July 1st hit, we just started getting monsoon, like uh, a monsoon by our standards, rainfall, a um, couple of inches at a time, several times, and way more than usual. As much in July as we would typically get, typically get in a full warm weather season here. So what, and then some really hot days in between. So what that's allowed um, the vegetables and plants to do is grow continuously instead of uh, sort of drying up and, and becoming somewhat dormant in, in the midst uh, heat of the summer. So peppers, usually I cannot grow a pepper to ripeness outside in a typical year. Um, this was from a start, so the plant already had some flowers on it. These are two of the plants that I actually bought and uh, just transplanted but they went into the greenhouse first and then I moved them out here I forget why I did that anyway they're doing quite well um, red pepper everything else as you can see bugs going into the eaves trough everything else as you can see inside is um, growing so fast that it's at the point where I'm taking stuff out broccoli is not something you typically go in a grow in a greenhouse in the middle of the summer because it's a cool weather vegetable so what it did is uh, flushed out really quickly, flowered really quickly. The broccolini just caught that in time and, and the broccoli just caught most of that in time. One of them probably is getting too far gone. But I'm taking those out and transplanting squash into the, those spaces, um, some delicata squash it's called, something we grew from seed. And that I just started in one of those pots and then uh, transplanted it now into the greenhouse and that'll grow into the fall, into the late fall. And I think that kind of squash is is uh, vining, so I'm going to have to trellis it up. Cucumbers are doing well. Um, peppers are doing extremely well. The tomatoes, I think it's probably too dry in there and too hot for them for the flowers to set or the, the flowers to even start or to grow. And then less pollination that you get in the greenhouse is, is stopping even the flowers that do uh, form from from being pollinated and turning into to tomatoes. So I'm gonna have to deal with that challenge. I think what I'll do next year is I'll uh, close up the greenhouse, hand pollinate, and make sure I've got my water system working fully functionally so that it's getting consistent moisture, again, deep moisture. Um, what else? Buckwheat, you can see sort of all over the ground here, which can slightly be invasive if you let it flower and seed, but I'm gonna let that do that for a year it's not going to go outside of this area because it's too densely um, vegetated or no shade or no sun in the forest. So I'm not afraid of it getting outside of this footprint. Um, but what I'm using it for is to improve the soil and add bulk to the soil. So I'm just kind of stepping on it and cutting it with the scythe every once in a while, let it fall to the ground and then turn into to, um, compost essentially. So what else have got? Got some service berry starts, like little saplings growing here. Uh, a couple other plants got some red o's here, dogwood. Um, that's asparagus back here. Got all my 
vegetable or tr uh, fruit trees are doing well. The cherries, the uh, plums, apricots, and um, and apples are doing very well. Getting lots of birds in here now too, so I'm trying to encourage more birds and bees by planting more flowers. So I've got to say I'm happy with the way the garden's turned out so far with minimal maintenance for the amount of time that I'm able to uh, you know, to focus on growing stuff. Because of the builds, I can't put as much time into the gardening as I'd like to. And um, anyway, it's a, a great start, great first season here. So next year will be that much more productive. And I'll finish more of the interior space uh, over, I think, in the late fall and winter too, in, in prep for next spring. Um, as far as the wood, you saw me milling the uh, timbers or milling uh, boards for the for the uh, cabin. I'm continuing to mill stuff. I've got a bunch of trees cut down and what I've learned just doing some research and getting some experience milling is that when you cut a tree down the log sits it doesn't really dry out like you would think it dries out and gets lighter but it takes so long that it's not um, um, not meaningful the amount of moisture that's left those logs so you have to get them milled into boards and then protect them from the weather and I really haven't done that so I, mean, I am working mostly with green wood I've got all the logs right here uh, not all the logs but a lot of milling logs right here that are the tops of the logs that I'm using for the logs of the cabin so I need to debark those and start letting them dry out a little bit qu uh, quicker on the outside and then get them into place so that's gonna be in the next two weeks I'll be certain to to uh, work on the walls of the cabin bringing them up just in time probably for the heat of summer to break um, it's a really hot and humid week again. <laughs> in fact, we're probably going to get some more rain today. Chance of a thunderstorm. Um, yeah, the milling. So I'll keep doing the milling of the logs and making more timbers and getting all the uh, rest of the roof boards and floorboards finished up and uh, and stuff for the outdoor kitchen in the future. So got my work cut out for me this year. Anyway, if you're interested in following along, if you're new to the channel, new to, the, to uh, this is one of your first videos you've seen of of my channel or my other channel then um, if you want to subscribe that would be great I appreciate that so, and then you get notified of any future videos as I release them and if you want to follow along either way uh, what's happening this year at the homestead you can click on the link in the bottom left hand corner of the screen click on that video or the most recent upload would be in the top left hand corner of the screen so thanks for watching appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you at the cabin next time take care